All right, how's everyone doing today? Well, I tell you what we're going to do is a little mini lecture on outlining your informative speeches. It is so very important that you outline your informative speech because it allows you to stay on track with your message, on track with your logic, and on track with the emotion that you layer throughout your entire speech. So, we are going to, first of all, go through Roman numerals, and then after I go through the Roman numerals, the second thing that we're going to do is that I'm going to explain why we do that and give in the third thing it will do is I will give you some examples okay so let's go ahead and get started we do when we do our informative outline we have all, by this point we have already done research you've looked at your topic you you know what the, the basic topic that you'll be speaking on and you have done research as well so you have everything and you say okay now you know I have a lot of information you know what is my thesis there was a lecture on thesis what is my thesis and what type of main points do we want to get across to the audience members now outlining helps you organize like all of the pop, 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 information into one linear format and I do a lot of what thinking before I bring it to that linear format so Roman numerals I ask students I used to ask students I quit asking I just do lecture now but I used to ask students so does everybody know how to use Roman numerals and outlining with Roman numerals and they say yeah no, yeah, yeah and then when I get the outlines the speech outlines it's not Roman numerals at all it's an essay okay we are not here to read an essay we are not here to write an essay we are here to extemporaneously deliver a public message to the masses all right so Roman numerals first of all we do this. This is Roman numeral one. Okay? Roman numeral one. Roman numeral two. Roman numeral three. Each Roman numeral has a function. So Roman numeral number one for us is going to be introduction. Roman numeral number two for us is going to be all of our main points. And Roman numeral number three is going to be our conclusion. Okay, so at the simplest, we have three Roman numerals that we're working with. We have Roman numeral number one, which looks like a capital I for our introduction, and we will talk about the elements of the introduction for the outline. And then for Roman numeral number two, which looks like two capital I's put together, that is where all of our main points are going to go. And then Roman numeral number three, which looks like three sticks with a top and a bottom, three vertical sticks with horizontal top and bottom, that is our conclusion, okay? Now then, I'm going to further develop a Roman numeral outline this way. Okay, so we're going to start with the introduction. Well, actually, let me do this. Roman numeral number one. This is where you have the introduction of your speech, okay? Directly indent five spaces. And if, after you indent five spaces, you put a capital A and a period. Then drop down and put a capital B and a period. Drop down a capital C and a period. 
drop down, a capital D and a period. And the reason that we do this is we are preparing for the logic of the introduction. We're, we're putting everything in a linear format. Remember, we've already done all the research. You've done your notes. I graded your handwritten notes so that you understand your information. So we have a capital I, which is our introduction, and we have a, which is Roman numeral one, and we have indented five spaces, and um, we have a capital A, B, C, and D. Okay, now I'm gonna erase these for the moment. Under the capital A, indent five spaces, and we have a one, a number one, and a number two. A number one and a number two. So what we have here is we will have the introduction and all the information under capital letter A is a thought. Let's do it like this. This is a thought. So A is information. I'll fill it in in just a moment. And anything that goes under A, this one and two, is information that connects to A. So this one and two information connect upward. Two connects to one, one connects to A, and A connects to the introduction. All of this is logic. Logic, logic, okay? Every single Roman numeral, whether it's Roman numeral number one, Roman numeral number two, Roman numeral number three, they all have this same structure. They all have A, if you see that, A, they all have a B, and sub points one and two. Okay, so you can think of A as a uh, um, a sub point and then one and two are sub points to the sub points. <laughs> I know it sounds complicated but when I show you the example of it you will understand it much more. At each of the Roman numerals has this structure so Roman numeral number one has this structure, Roman numeral number two has this structure, Roman numeral number three has this structure. As students ask me why, what is so big about structuring a speech? Why can't we just read an essay? So do you want me to read essay lectures every class session? No, you don't. I mean, you all told me that in the beginning day one when we had our orientation. You didn't want me to do that. Well, having an outline like this keeps you from reading an essay. It keeps you on point with your information for your speech thought for thought. Not word for word, but thought for thought. This is a thought right here. This is a thought. And you have just organized this thought so that your audience members follow your logic. You do not want your audience members changing their sail, like this is their sail of their brain. You want to be the captain of the sailboat, and you want to move that sail, and those Roman numerals, that is how you are controlling them following your message. Not only following your message, but catching your message and processing it the way you want them to process it. So. That's Roman numeral number one. I could just change it and put two, Roman numeral number two, and these are going to be our main points. Under Roman numeral two, and again, this stays. I'm going to have a piece of logical subpoint for A, a piece of logical subpoint for B, and a piece of logical subpoint for C. And then I'll have subpoints to the subpoints. <laughs> and again, we'll go through it in just a moment. Here. I could change this and put conclusion. And it's going to stay the same. 
Roman numeral, this would be Roman numeral number three. A, there's your piece of logic. Subpoints to the A are one and two. Okay? This is a thought. You're bringing a thought to your audience. Okay? So if you look at the example, uh, there's a couple of links there for you to look at examples. This is you, how I will be grading this outline. You will get a grade for the outline. But it has to be the way we're talking about it. It has to be the way there are the examples that I provide for you now. Sometimes the Roman numeral structures are structured just a little differently. Sometimes every main point gets its own Roman numeral. But for us and our purposes, we're doing it this way. You can veer from the way when you leave this class but there's no veering to my way today, okay? <laughs> Stay on track, let's just do it like this, okay? So, what I did first of all was talk to you about, you know, why we use the, the Roman numeral outlining for informative speech. I went through the outlining of it. Now, oh, let me give you an example, okay? So, let's start with the introduction which is Roman numeral number one period and let's say that um, that my informative thesis and you saw the thesis outline the thesis has two uh, two parts it has the topic and some information about the topic so my topic is going to be about happiness and the thesis is um, we today my informative speech is about happiness at work. Okay? So there's my thesis. Here's the topic. My topic is about happiness. I need to narrow that a little more. And so um, what I say in my speech is today my goal is to inform you um, about happiness at work. How about let's even say with a bad boss, right? You have a bad or just a challenging boss with a challenging boss. I'm lucky. I've had some great bosses at where I have worked, but I have also worked for some challenging ones as well. So in my introduction for happiness, I'm going to write happiness with challenging boss. Okay, so I've indented five spaces, and the first thing that I am going to do with the capital letter A is to have an attention getter. Okay? And in the attention getter, I'm going to have underneath it one, two, three. This is subpoints one, two, and three. And I'm going to put an R, an A, and a W. You need to have an attention getter for your speech as a group, one for the whole group. Not everybody have one, one for the whole group. And in this attention getter, it needs to be raw. This is my invention. I developed this acronym. This is the way I have been teaching attention getters for a few years now, because I found that the information in textbooks is just a bit clinical, you know, and this just seems to really make sense. So your attention getter needs to be relevant. It needs to be appropriate. And it needs to have the wow factor. So if you notice here, A, okay, the sub point is attention getter. Because here is the main point right here. So here is my attention getter. And the next 
sub points are the one, two, and three. So you would put how it's relevant, how it's appropriate, and how it has the wow factor. Then you put a B, okay? And after the attention getter, then you need to have some sort of connectivity of uh, the attention getter to the topic. Just because you do an attention getter doesn't mean that people uh, certainly understand. Some people may be thinking something else. You can't control people's thoughts. <laughs> So sometimes you need to make connections for them. Again, it goes to that sail. You are the captain of this, this sailboat right here. And so pause, make a connection. So here is our attention getter, and here is our topic, right? So under here, you just might have a one, which is to talk about the attention getter, and number two, to connect it to the topic. Okay, so we have Roman numeral number one. Underneath it, we indented five spaces for A, and we have our subpoints as one, two, and three. We indented five spaces, and we have a B, and we ind uh, uh, indented five spaces, and we have a one and a two. So you will be graded on an attention getter. You will be graded on um, um, uh, connecting the attention getter to the topic. So then we have a C, and I'm going to move it over here so that you can see me, okay? We're going to have a C. Make sure you can see me. So we have an A, a B, and a C. Remember we indent, indent that C. We have an attention getter. Um, we have connecting the attention getter, and then we specifically want to state our thesis. And remember, the thesis is the, in the lecture, go back and see the lecture, it's the topic plus a description, a one sentence description of what you are going to talk about. So you have A, B, C, and then D. What is your D? Well, you know, you've told us about the topic. Um, you've told us about your thesis. Now you need to specifically state your main points. What are you going to tell us? This is you guiding that sailboat, right? You're not lowering the boom. <laughs> I don't know all the other language to it, but you know what I mean. Um, so under D, you will put one, however many main points you have in your group. You might have five main points. Just list them. So today, when I talk to you about happiness and working with the challenging boss, I am going to tell you, first of all, about uh, Franklin Covey's Seven Habits Tool, Circle of Concern and um, Circle of, of um, the, em the Empowerment Circle. Uh, next, I'm going to talk to you about uh, a breathing tool that you can use as well. Third, and then you would list everything. And maybe I even provide the effects. If, if, if I don't or if, you, if we don't learn how to deal with our bosses who are challenging, then there are effects that happen. So this is what I'm going to tell you about in my main points today. Then E is a transition statement. Transition statement. So again, E, I've indented five. Under E, to get to that first sub point, I indent five spaces again. And in that transition statement, um, I want to tell my audience members, woo, we are done with the introduction. Ha ha, we're done, we're done. We have to tell the audience that. If we do not tell the audience that, they don't know that we are done with the introduction. I have heard 
so many professional speeches that I had no earthly idea when they were done with the introduction and I couldn't shift my brain. My brain just would not shift with them, probably because I'm trained to listen for language that says, hey, we've done the attention getter, we connected the topic, we've done the thesis and we've listed our main points. I'm hanging, they, you know, woo -hoo, you're gonna lower that boom and I'll fall in the water and, and I won't hear. So a transition statement tells them where you're going next. Hey, we are done with our uh, introduction and we're going to move to our first main point. This is outlining your introduction thought for thought. Outlining your introduction thought for thought. One of the things that I practice when I deliver a speech is I want to make sure to really, really, really nail that introduction. Someone in their semantics assignment chose nail, which I thought was brilliant, chose nail. Uh, and that's what I'm saying here. I will do my outline of the introduction and practice and practice and practice until I deliver it the way I want. I deliver it in inflection. I deliver it with the way to speak that I want to speak. I deliver it with all of my nonverbals. I practice all of that because I want to logically, emotionally, and with the subject matter, nail the introduction. Okay? All right, so this is one lecture. I'm going to stop it at this point, and I will do the main points lecture, stop that, and then I will do the conclusion lecture. Okay? Thank you.